Hello everyone, this is Lock OS, and welcome back to another mission to, uh, editor tutorial video, this time on the use of trigger zones. Trigger zones are really useful uh, for many uh, reasons for the, in the, in the uh, trigger system and in like the logical system in general in the game. Uh, they can be used as individual points for setting up certain things. For instance, uh, certain uh, effects call for a zone to be used for the center of the, the effect. So if you wanted to say have a, for instance, pretend like this uh, terminal building here at this airport was on, on fire, you can set up, you can point, you can just put a basically one foot radius circle on that uh, building. And you can use that sort of as a marker to say, hey, this is where this effect will play. Or if you want to use it for like an ATIS system, or a traffic control message, a uh, message near traffic control, you can set that as the origin point for a radio message, or so all sorts of fun things you can set up. And there is a minimum, actually looking up there, a minimum radius of a trigger zone of 16 feet. We're gonna go ahead and put this trigger zone back here. I'm gonna set it up to our original spec of a uh, 10,000 feet. And that goes uh, on to my next point, um, in trigger zones. Uh, you can also use them um, for determining an area that a unit has entered or left. So you can determine if whenever you do your, whenever you evaluate, whenever the mission logic evaluates a trigger zone for uh, a trigger zone for something, you can have it evaluate to see if, okay, is a unit in the trigger zone? Is it out of the trigger zone? Um, and you can use it um, that way to determine if the, the presence of something or the lack of something in an area. Uh, you can also put the zones, uh, set it to a circular zone. You can also set it to a quad point zone. Uh, quad point uh, sets it up as a, as a square at first, uh, but you can see that there's this edit button next to it and then you can edit it, its shape into anything that you want. So you can have it be a uh, quad point around these ships like this. So that's a zone. Um, to actually move the zone, then you can go right here. I like to use uh, one of my favorite points for quad. One of my favorite uses for quad point for a zone is let's, uh, you can go to an airport like here, like a Rota at the quad point and then you could set up the quad point around the airstrip like this and then you can use this sort of as an indication of if a unit is actually on the runway or if you need a little bit more finer control you can or if you want more general control you can set it up like this where the uh the quad point covers the all the taxiways as well. And then you can use this logic of both in combination with some other things to determine um, whether or not the uh, unit is within the airfield and landed. So you go up here, zoom back in. So trigger zones by default are fixed to the terrain uh, that they're placed on. Uh, you can link a, now the thing is with linking a unit, it doesn't link the unit to have the zone move with the unit in the mission. It links the, uh, the zone to a unit so that it moves relative to the unit in the mission editor. So let's see here. A good example would be. So if we link this RTB zone to the carrier, if we use if we move the carrier, the zone moves with the carrier in the mission editor, but it won't move with the carrier in the actual mission itself. It'll only move. It'll linking a unit to a trigger zone uh, moves the units. Will move the zone if you move the unit that it's linked to. So. To do a moving zone, that to have this zone uh, of effect move with a unit, uh, what you want to do is go to the uh, mission logic editor, and then we can do a let's see 
here. We'll do end zone. There's a condition in here. Find it. Uh, part of group end zone. A or it is. You have to do um units only. By the way, it doesn't see. Uh, I don't think there is an option for uh groups in moving zones. Uh, there's only an option for a unit inside a moving zone, which is useful. Um, because you really want to be using a lot of these more advanced uh zone logic for individual units inside of a single player mission. Uh, you can have a unit inside a, a yeah. You can have a unit inside of a moving zone. So. In this case, we'll say, let's look up real quick. Um, just put a, not really a, not a junk uh, thing, but we'll do a message to all. Just to get it, just to, it stays um, saved. Look at our aircraft. Uh, rename our group to player aircraft. And name our unit to, uh, the pilot is the name of the unit, by the way. So let's see here, name, pilot, skill, da 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 da. That all set. That should be all set up. Go down here. Go to conditions. Uh, unit inside moving zone. So we can have player aircraft one inside of the RTB zone, and the zone unit is the unit that the zone will be placed on top of, and that will move with that unit. So there's no offset zone. It's very much a, it has to be a, the zone is entirely on that unit and moving with it. There's no offset. So you can't have the zone be like a thousand meters behind the unit, so to speak. So we want to set the unit that's moving with the uh, the carrier. And then we could say, uh, welcome back would be the message. And we can have it displayed for 15 seconds because it's like just a simple message. So that's how you can, uh, that's one example of using a zone with a, uh, within the mission editor system. Uh, the zone for moving zones, uh, if, a zone, if you consider, a, if you have the zone set up for a moving zone, I, do, I don't believe that the zone has to be placed on top of the unit. Uh, the, the zone could be anywhere on the map, but for the sake of mission editing, I would keep it nearby. And also for the sake of mission editing, uh, you do have colors. Like with the trigger logic, you can set the zone to be any color you wish. So we can set it to blue, and then once we deselect the zone, it'll stay blue. And then that way you can keep track of, oh, the blue zones mean this, the red zones mean this, the green zones mean that. Um, real quick, also for zones, uh, we'll go ahead and we'll set up a trigger zone here. Uh, like I was mentioning with effects, uh, real quick, we'll do a very quick effect zone here. So we'll do 18 feet just to keep this zone relatively tidy. If you're doing effect zones um, or something where you're using the zone as a marker, uh, just keep the zone radius minuscule just so that you're not blocking your line. Of, that way you keep your screen nice and tidy and you're not going to miss anything or you're just going to get your screen clogged up. That wouldn't be nice, so we can go ahead and mission start. Actions. Effect smoke. And then we could have like a large smoke and fire play out there. Um, so at mission start, you would have this effect play right there. And then you can decrease the density. We'll have a pretty, we'll have a pretty dense, a high density. Uh, you can do, do trigger zone one. So we'll have this large smoke and fire spawn at that zone's uh, center. You can even have it right here, where instead of at mission start, once these units are dead, it'll play this effect. So once the cruise, so in a previous mission, we set up a cruise missile strike on this group so we'll go ahead have those dead so once all three of these units are dead uh, it'll play this effect of like a smire of a large smoke and fire so it's looking like uh, there's still an ongoing fire from all these uh, destroyed husks 
And that's the basic uh, use of trigger zones in the game. Uh, they have they tie into a lot of trigger uh, logical triggers, uh, units being in zones, being out of zones, uh, zones that are moving that they can be in or in of or out of. Uh, they can also be in effects. So you can have a zone, um, for instance, um, be the source of an effect or the source of a sound. Um, they're very uh, they're very useful in game. Uh, you're going to use them quite a bit. Uh, and keep in mind also that if you need to have a non-circular uh, zone uh, to make sure to switch over to quad point. Uh, I find quad point zones very useful when you're trying to set up borders because you can uh, have the quad point represent like four sections, like four points of a border. And then you can go in and have multiple zones uh, to create the entirety of a border. So that is something you can also do. So that's it for zones and the mission editor. Um, Got nothing else to say. Hopefully that was a relatively short and sweet video for you all. And I'll see you next time where next time we're going to start uh, alternating between uh, videos where I'm going to talk about different aircraft and sort of sort of ideas on uh, ideal loadouts and also loadout conditions because certain aircraft have different. Uh, you have to be mindful of how you load them up for both players uh and if you're using them as AI units, as well as uh, going over this uh, additional properties and explaining uh, what it, what the individual properties are for each of the aircraft, and as well as like, some other notes that are going to pop up time to time, like making certain that, say, your Russian aircraft, like, if I can find it here, like your MiG-21, uh, beating you guys over the head with the fact that you need to set up these radios at the MiG-21, because otherwise they won't have any radios, stuff like that. So until next time, this is Loco S signing out, where we go up when we start going over uh, different aircraft, setting them up in the mission. And oh, that's right. And also we want to alternate those with uh, some example missions where we go, where I go through and say, hey, here's a quick example mission of how you do like an artillery barrage and like different ways to set it up, stuff like that. So until next time, this is Loco S. Signing out.